These data have been measured from a set of positions on a sample and each spectrum is acquired with spatial information so this represents an image data set defined in terms of spectra which are carbon 1s, an OJ from the carbon and an oxygen 1s. And what we'd like to do now is illustrate how to do charge correction for such a data set and the reason that a charge correction is required is because it, when we overlay the oxygen 1s you can see that we have a range of possible positions that could be allocated to this, these peaks. So if we assume that these peaks actually align in, in binding energy then the first thing we need to do is try and define the peak maximum as best we can and one way of doing this is to perform a PCA on these oxygen 1s and use a limited number of abstract factors to reproduce the data and you can see that the peak maxima are now quite well defined. So the next step is to combine the oxygen and the carbon so that both can be calibrated at the same time and the way to do this is to create a set of images that represent these oxygen images that have, that have had their noise reduction. If we go back we can now create a set of carbon images and these ones no PCA enhancements have been made here so we'll just take these and again create a set of images and I'm going to copy these together into the same file. So now I have both oxygen images and the carbon images and this means that when I overlay and use the option that says convert images to spectra I've overlaid the oxygen and the carbon together so when I create them I get spectra that are now a, a combination of both so I've got the noise reduced oxygen and similarly I've got the original spectra for the carbon 1s so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a different way of charge correcting and this is to allow for the fact that these spectra are just one column the ones that you see here just one column of pixels in the image and what I need to do is shift every column so I'm going to say shift all the corresponding variables and that's referring to the, the different columns of spectra corresponding to pixels within the image and if I hold the control key down with this ticked and use the cursor I can mark out an interval which has now been entered here that's, that's the range of values that will be looked at when this calibration is performed and I enter a true value well I've just used a reference value 532 and when I say apply with this button here shift all CVs uh, what happens is I get in the processing history a shift data calibration instruction and if I select all of these spectra and let's just zoom in So you can see one has been moved. If I now propagate that processing and zoom in again, you can now see that the, the alignment has, has been made and the alignment has also been made to these carbon peaks. So we now see that the where well, we're seeing graphene oxide, a peak here which is characteristic of the graphene oxide, they're far better aligned than they were before. One further step, if I wanted to isolate the, the carbon 1s again, I'm going to create these images from the spectra. And this time I'm going to now select out where I find the energies that correspond to carbon. And let's create spectra from these. So now I've got a data set 
it has got energy aligned graphene oxide peaks which I can do further processing on. So the first thing we'll do is set the element transition that, so it's the carbon 1s and we'll also change the the uh, object name we could have done them both in the same same place but so what we can do now is potentially do some peak fitting for example let's create a region and let's create a couple of components and this one's going to be a line shape from data which has previously been prepared and a second one that is going to be uh, the gra reduced graphene oxide again previously prepared line shape which can be fitted to the data fix the position for these two they ought to be roughly the same throughout so what we need to do is say this is the graphene oxide and this one is the reduced graphene oxide we'll propagate those and having overlaid them in the active tile we can convert components to images and this gives us a pair of images that are complementary and so they should be graphene oxide here and graphene reduced graphene where it's green and then we could just try and make this look a little bit more um, interesting by increasing the size of the images we can get the pixelation to reduce and so we have a pair of images and these represent graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide